Hello, this is Karen Farnsworth of Wildflower Quilting. In today's tutorial, I want to show you Creative Studio 7's border corner feature. Now there are many ways to accomplish borders on our Statlers, and I'm just going to show you one of those ways today. I really like to use Creative Studio 7's border corner feature because it does the math for me. It's really simple, fast, and easy to set up. And I can customize or recreate my boundaries to show those funky or wonky borders if I need to after I do the initial setup. So I'm going to be demonstrating in SAM mode today, but the process in on your stitcher is exactly the same except you will be choosing points on your actual quilt with your machine head to draw those boundaries instead of choosing grid points like I will be today. I'm going to be showing uh, several of my new patterns as part of the November 2017 Bread and Butter Club I sent a set of border and corner designs each of the borders doubles as an edge to edge so you get extra use out of it as well border corners in Creative Studio 7 is really really easy I select my corner design then I hold my control key down and select the coordinating border repeat go up to border corner icon click on that icon and I'm going to be creating my boundaries using my mouse and with grid snap on I've set my grid actually to six inches you can see down here just so that I can quickly and easily create these um, boundaries and Creative Studio 7 the setup here for border corner walks us through the steps to create our outer boundaries then our inner boundaries it even gives us this cool little image that shows us with a little star sticker that moves around exactly what point it's asking for so I'm going to start with my outer boundary click the four points for that then four points for an inner boundary and when I'm done Creative Studio places my corner and the repeats in between those two corners now if I add my total size, this total size would be the length of my border. This quilt happens to be 80 inches. Once I enter that, if Creative Studio can fit repeats along the side in the space that's left in that boundary, it will add those repeats. Creative Studio has done the math. I did not have to figure out how many repeats and at what size I would need to put them to fit in between corners along the side. Love it. It does the, the math for me. So now I've got this set up. It looks really good. But my border corner setup is still open over here. And if I did want to try a different design, I can just come over into my project tab or my patterns tab and choose a different design or border corner set to try out. How about frills? I'm going to choose the corner, hold my control key down, choose the border repeat, and CS places that in there. Um, country vine is a really popular design. Choose the corner, choose the border repeat, and it replaces the, the last pattern with this pattern and lets me see what the setup looks like. I can do this as many times as I want to until I'm happy with the designs that I've chosen. How about button twist? Choose the corner, then the border repeat, and it shows me that setup there. When I'm done with the setup, I can just check, okay, when I found the pattern set that I want to use. Now, a little bit of troubleshooting. Sometimes I run into a design that doesn't play nicely with CS7's border corner. Um, this wallpaper pattern is an example of that. I'm going to choose the corner and it placed really nicely. Now I'm going to choose, hold control key down and choose that border repeat. All right, and it doesn't place quite as nicely. So the sizing on my border repeats is not correct. So I want to show you a couple of ways that I deal with this and you can choose whichever one works best for you. I can uncheck connect over here in my setup and when I uncheck connect CS resizes those borders to fit 
but they are not connected. If I scroll in here, the repeats are not connected to each other, but they are resized. I would have to take each one of these repeats and make sure it connects to the one next to it. After I've made sure that everything is connected, I can double check using order join, select the first pattern, click on the order join icon, and if it's not highlighted, I have a break in between those two patterns. So I know I missed a spot and I need to come back here, F7, endpoint snap, and connect that. Let's try again, double check using order join, select the first design, order join, everything's highlighted so it is all connected. Here's another way I might deal with those patterns that don't play nicely in CS7's border corner feature. This is how CS set it up for me and I went ahead and clicked OK in the setup to tell Creative Studio I would take it from here and I might get rid of a couple of repeats up here and then select the other repeats, the remainder of those, and just stretch them up a bit. I enlarged everything using the corner anchor and now I need to pull them over using the wedge just a bit. Now everything's still connected uh, as far as the repeats go. I need to make sure that I come in here, use F7, and endpoint snap to connect the repeats to the corners. To deal with the side repeats in this situation, I have a couple of options. If I resize these patterns, I'm changing the math the way that Creative Studio figured it out. So I can take a chance and enlarge these designs as long as they fit in that boundary and as long as I snap them to the border corner. I can go ahead and do that for both of the sides and then hope that when I get down to the bottom of the quilt I can fit a repeat or two or three in the space that's left to me without having to shrink or enlarge those repeats too much. So that's one way I can deal with it. The other way I can deal with it is just to get rid of those side repeats altogether. Stitch out my top border, set up and stitch my bottom border, and then take the quilt off of the frame to turn it so that I can work with the entire space between the corners and fill in that space in one go. I really love Creative Studio 7's border corner feature because it helps set up those border corners so quickly for me. I've demonstrated just a few of the many ways that we can deal with borders in Creative Studio 7. I hope that some of these tips help and that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy!